In this video, I'm going to talk about multiple choice questions, specifically multiple choice single answer questions, and a feature that's not really well known in Adobe Captivate that allows you to make them a little bit more dynamic and make the, the end user feel a little bit more like they're interacting with a person who's actually asking them, asking them these questions. So what we're referring to here um, is I've got a basic question set up here, nothing fancy. The correct answer is answer A. Let's go to the quiz panel and set up a few things just before we get into this. Um, I've already changed it to have four answers. I don't want to shuffle those answers. I don't want multiple answers. And I don't want a partial score. I do want to make this uh, simply a knowledge check question that the learners will complete partway through the course completion. It's not uh, going to contribute to their final score. So I'm going to make the points equal zero. Uh, there is a correct and an incomplete caption. I'm actually not going to use the correct caption in this case, and you'll see why in a little bit. So I'm going to uncheck that. And uh, there is no option for uh, getting rid of the incorrect message, but if you select it and hit delete, you will have the opportunity to get rid of that as well. I won't need it as well. So I have uh, that pretty much set up. Um, my success uh, action will be go to the next slide, and I want the user to try this, you know, again, it's just a knowledge check. Uh, I'd like them to have feedback and try again if they, uh, if they don't succeed the first time. So I'm going to say a number of th uh, attempts, three. Uh, obviously, four would be, they would just be able to guess until they get the correct answer. So we'll give them three tries. But I don't want to select a retry message. And again, you'll see why in a moment. And um, I don't have uh, any specific failure messages for the try that they're taking. In this case, you would use this feature to have, you know, a retry message number one, first attempt, and number two, a second attempt, and number three, the third attempt. Um, the reason I don't want that is, again, I'm going to create specific feedback for each and every correct or wrong answer. And we'll see that in a moment. Last attempt will be go to next slide, but you could have this go to any slide if you want in the course. So for example, if they're not understanding the concepts that were taught to them, they're not retaining that knowledge, maybe you'll have them jump back to the beginning of the previous lesson. And of course, uh, for LMS purposes, you're going to have them report the answers. So let's go back to the actual question itself. So I have all the elements on place here. Here's my correct answer. Now, like I said before, we had that correct answer uh, feedback message. I'm going to do, I'm going to create it a different way and just to be consistent with the other ways that I'm going to create the feedback messages. I'm going to select the properties panel, which might seem a little unusual if you're working with a quiz question. Most of the time you spend on the quiz questions on the quiz panel but let's do this for now. Properties. And uh, if you select the Options tab underneath Properties, you'll see something that you won't see for other objects in your course, and that's this Advanced Answer option, which is really useful for, for uh, providing specific feedback to the specific answer that the user has selected. So I'm going to check this off. Now we need to choose an action. Right? So start thinking about this. If you start thinking about the opportunity here, you can have this quiz question direct the learner to any place in your course depending on how they answer the question. So think scenario and branching learning. You've got some real neat opportunities here. In this case, I'm just going linear, so we'll just go to next slide. It's fine. And we're going to show the feedback message. And when I check, check this off, I'll get a brand new correct answer uh, um, feedback message. But unfortunately, it's set up as a hint. 
So the caption type, I'm just going to change that to my correct caption type. And I'll just resize this a little bit and I will type the message that I would like learners to see when they get this answer or get this question correct. So we'll say correct. Each door in the building has its own unique ID number that indicates exactly its location. Click anywhere to continue. Something like that. Or you could say click anywhere or press the letter Y. That works too. Now here's the thing. So I have my correct answer. Now, you know, where's my wrong answer? Well, I'm actually going to create three wrong answers. One for each of the wrong answers that are available. So I've selected the second answer. I'm going to check off advanced answer option. The action is actually, I don't want them to do anything because I don't want them to leave this page. I don't want anything to happen. There's no action, but I will show a feedback message and that feedback message will be specific as I write it for this answer. So we'll say incorrect. This would not be a good use of the fire departments. I'm making this up as I go along here. Uh, the de fire department's time. Please try again. So again, that, that answer or that feedback is very specific to that particular uh, answer, which is incorrect. So I'm just going to move this aside here for a moment. I'm going to choose this wrong answer. Again, choose the advanced answer option. The action will be no action and show a feedback message. Just to take a moment to appear on screen. We'll just resize this for ease of typing and I will come up with something here. So incorrect. Uh, the GPS in your phone will likely not work inside the building. Please try again. So again, another wrong answer we have very specific feedback for. Again, the goal of e-learning is to try and to duplicate what would uh, what a training course would actually be like. And of course, in a real live uh, instructor-led course, you would have a facilitator there answering these questions and expanding on them. In e-learning, the way to do that is to have a specific feedback for each of the wrong answers. So our final one, all of the above, uh, in this case is not a correct answer. I know a lot of people use them when, they, when the answer truly is all of the above, but in this case it's actually a distractor. I don't mind using all of the above when um, when it is the wrong answer at least as often as it is the right answer. So uh, it tends to be used for the right answer when you have multiple choice single answers when in fact the answer is in fact all of the above. But in this case I'm using it as, like I said, a distractor. So incorrect, oops, incorrect. And I'm just going to say very plainly, there is a single answer to this question. Please try again. So now what we have is we have a very specific feedback for every single possible way the user can answer these questions. I'm just going to align these uh, items up in the middle of my screen here and just maybe move them down a little bit. And uh, that looks pretty good. 
So we have uh, we have this multiple choice question set up again. Just to summarize here, um, this is being treated like a knowledge check, so there are no points assigned to it. Uh, the only default caption is an incomplete caption. The rest of these are specific to the answers that we have. We have all of our default buttons, a clear, a back, a next, and of course a submit. Uh, if they are successful, they will go to the next slide. They have three attempts to do this correctly. And if they ultimately cannot get this correctly, we will move them on to the, the next slide as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. So let's preview this and see how it looks. And we'll try some wrong answers and some correct answers as well to see how that goes. So I'm just previewing the next five slides and we'll get an idea of what this looks like. So here's our question. Um, let's choose, well, it's it's obviously all of the above, right? Because that's always the right answer when all of the above is available. So let's choose that and hit submit. Oh, okay, incorrect. There is a single answer to this question. Please try again. Of course, I can hit clear to get rid of that message. Uh, let me try no need. The fire department will check all locations in the event of an emergency. So that's obviously the right answer. We'll hit submit incorrect. This would not be a good use of the fire department's time. Please try again. So uh, we'll obviously use the GPS within a cell phone. It's accurate enough. Or use the closest door number. I think it might be the door number answer. Let's hit submit and see how that is. Correct. Each door in the building has its own unique ID number that indicates exactly its location. Click anywhere to continue. So there's an example of how you can make your learning interactions a little bit more dynamic. The answers are specific uh, or have their own specific feedback. So again, it's more like a conversation. It's a little bit more natural, a little less electronic and regimented and either yes or no. We've got, we've got some interaction here that users can really experience. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you like this particular video, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up.